Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crombie Radio Hour on Saginaw and 60. I think that was a really interesting conversation about uh, about the real estate market and uh, trends and and how to be successful in the current market. So I wanted to check in with uh, with another uh, uh, agent, um, and we're now joined by Carla Corsi, who is with uh, uh, Remax Enterprises in South Mississauga. Uh, Carla, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Now you've got an interesting background because what I understand is that uh, you, um, you, you, you're a mom and uh, you've raised two kids. Uh, you've had a successful career uh, in business and in the provincial government um, where you worked for 22 years, 22 That's years. Right. And then you gave it up uh, to uh, uh, get your real estate license and get involved in real estate. Um, that's quite the, the transition. I actually did it both together parallel for about seven years. And then just recently, I uh, decided to take the plunge and follow my dreams and just focus on that 100%. So it's been no regrets and never looked back. It's been amazing. Excellent. And you've also, from what I understand, uh, bought and uh, and fixed up some homes um, on your own. I did. Yes, that's correct. In North uh, Recreation Properties, I Airbnb them. Um, the uglier, the better. And I make them beautiful and I Airbnb them. So that's uh, another passion of mine. Is that uh, a good business? Is that a challenging business? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it can be very lucrative for sure. Um, you know, you have to be very selective in the areas that you want to focus on. Um, some areas like the Sega Beach are a lot more popular with families. Um, I've done very well there because you've got, you know, Scandinavian, you've got uh, the spa, you've got the uh, Collingwood, you've got the ski hills, you've got the beach. So there's, it's very well-rounded. Um, so seasonally, uh, you'll do very well compared to maybe other more uh, secluded areas that are beautiful nonetheless, but there really isn't much to do. So um, you have to be very, you know, picky and choosy as to where you're going to be investing uh, for recreation property. You have to be picky and choosy in who you rent to? Well, Airbnb does that all for you. So that's the beauty of it. They screen them all out for you. Um, I have it set up that I would like to know who it is that's going to be uh, in the property. So, you know, they write me a little short, hi, I'm a family of four, we're looking to get away, whatever the case may be. Um, and as a host, you have the option of denying them or accepting them based on that. So I kind of do a lot of pre-screening. I don't just do automatic bookings so that I have that control as to who stays there. Yeah. And, and, and do you have to go up? Uh, do you have cleaners that uh, do most of the work? How do you do all the maintenance? Yeah. So I do have a cleaner that I'm very loyal to. She's been amazing. And it, that's super important to being a super host and, you know, having those good reviews and people coming back. Um, you do have to go up. So again, it has to be a, um, a property that you can get to. It can't be like three, four hours away because if you have to go and restock toilet paper or if there's something that you have to do up there, you want that to be accessible to you. So it's, you know, not a whole day driving up. So there is a lot of maintenance and engagement involved. Um, I know other clients that I've assisted in purchasing these properties, they've enlisted the services of a property manager um, because, you know, they're really busy with their own careers and they're just not as engaged in it, um, which is totally fine. For me, I love being hands on and um, I'm lucky enough to have that time to do that. So right. it, for me, it works out. Do you. Um... Do you think that uh, this Airbnb concept is a long-term concept? Some people, you know, complain that they don't pay uh, hotel tax, that they're not uh, subject to the same regulations that uh, um, hotels would be subject to, uh, that they take away rental stock from, uh, you know, regular people that would be renting. Is it a good concept or is it one that, you know, you think would be better if uh, it got regulated away? Well, it is somewhat regulated, like some areas are zoned so that you can run an Airbnb or bread and breakfast. Um, there is business licensing that's involved and some areas don't allow it because of that reason. Exactly. So different uh, municipalities, different towns, especially up north, um, they're all starting to pass that bylaw where it can be regulated so that there is sufficient housing for those reasons. Exactly. Um, in terms of is it sustainable down the road? I think it gives, I know for me, I love Airbnb. I mean, I love luxury hotels too, but I find that it gives you a lot more flexibility. You know, you've got a kitchen, go groceries. Um, so it gives you more of that comfort of home and people like to feel that authenticity when they visit, whether you're visiting abroad or whether you're visiting, you know, Collingwood or Muskoka, they want to feel that. So it is doing very, very well. Um, Airbnb also introduced a tax not too long ago where now, you know, you have to, 
pay your HST and, and you know, the customer or the, um, the, the guest is paid the HST as well. So it's come a far way from before um, because of those regulations. Do you use the, uh, the, the, the place as well yourself personally? Oh yeah. I use it as well. Yeah. I block off some time in the summertime and I use it with my family. Yeah. So it ends up being a, a reasonable second uh, cottage, second home, second cottage uh, for you too. Totally. And someone else is paying it. So it's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Sounds good. So tell me why give up 22 years in the provincial government and go into real estate? Uh, you know what? It was a great career. I loved my job. I started when I was 20 years old. Um, I know everyone's going to do the math, but yeah. So I did it for a really long time and um, I got my license uh, probably eight years ago now because I was always an investor myself and, you know, loved doing open houses and I was so involved in, in what was happening in the market and I thought you know what I'm just going to do it myself so it was a challenge because my kids were really little um, when I did it so on weekends I was in the library at nights after you know my job and it was a high demanding job you know high level management um, I just decided and it could have been a COVID reflection I don't know but I thought you know what I think I'm at the end and you know it's just when you know it's time it's time and you just put your faith in, uh, you know, in what you do. And I know I do it well. And you just follow your dreams and you just do it. So I had things lined up ahead of time. I mean, I don't just pull the plug on a, a pensionable, great job. So there is some forethought and some analytics involved. You know, I have a family, I have bills to pay, uh, a lifestyle that I enjoy. So it was all done very thoughtfully. But I just, you know, life is short, right? So do what I love. And um it's a different type of service industry that I was doing before. Now, in the last couple of years, when uh, we had one of the hottest market in uh, in Canadian real estate history, it was probably a great uh, a great job. Um, is it today? Um, you know what what the volumes are down dramatically, and uh, and there was a lot of people involved in real estate in the last couple of years. What's uh, yeah. what's it like today? I think it's still uh, a good place to be. Like I said, you know. Normally, people would be like, oh, my God, do you regret it? Because now the market's changed so much. And I'm like, no, I don't. Um, you just have to adjust. Um, there's a huge education piece that you have to do right now with clients. Um, there's a lot of sensitivities. Uh, there's a lot of strains. And people just are not quite sure what's going on, right? You have mainstream media that says one thing. Um, our market stats say something else. Um, we still have homes in Toronto that are selling over asking. Um, I just did a purchase yesterday. We're on a conditional uh, offer right now where I got a recreational property for my clients for a hundred thousand less than, uh, you know, what it was listed at. So there is a lot of good deals to be had. And I know deals is like the word we don't say in real estate, but I think it is a very good market. It's a balanced market. And, um, I think just like gas prices, you know, everyone adjusted people that want to buy and sell, they're going to adjust as well. They're going to not buy the house. That's, you know, $2 million. They're going to adjust and, you know, look for a home. That's a million dollars. So home ownership is still the desired Canadian dream. Um, you know, and people are still looking for that. They just adjust. So let's, let's take, let's take a, a step back. So uh, we all know the story. Interest rates have gone up. What's happened to both volume and uh, pricing in Mississauga? Well, it's priced a lot of people out of the market. That's for sure. So buyers are struggling at the stress test um, and they're being priced out. So longer, higher priced homes at a certain price point, they are sitting a little bit longer. Um, no question about that. And pricing just really needs to be done, you know, thoughtfully and you really have to analyze what's going on because the interest rates are 100% affecting the market. Um, we find a lot of people are struggling at closing. You know, they can't close uh, because the banks now are being extra conservative and they're being extra cautious and they want, you know, X amount more because the appraiser came in lower. So it is a stressful time for sure. And um, we just have to make sure that we're navigating it, you know, knowledgeably. And, you know, the real estate agents that are in Mississauga are amazing at it and they're very knowledgeable and that makes a huge difference. So I'm told that uh, pricing is down, you know, 10 to 15% in um, outlying cities like Brantford, uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, et cetera, that that hasn't happened yet in Mississauga, but that volume is down something like 47%. And so therefore people are expecting that there will be a price decline once people adjust and uh, and the sales actually go through and get recorded. What 
what's your sense? Is are, are we down at all? Uh, is it going to come down in the future? You know, I get uh, emails on a on an almost a daily, actually, frankly, almost maybe on an hourly basis. New price, better price, lower price, etc. What is actually happening on the street? So you're right. The York region and north of that uh, did take more of a hit for sure. Um, and it's, you know, now that everyone's returning back to the office, the commute is not no longer attractive. Whereas during COVID, you know, people were at home and they were okay paying a certain price to be up there because you work from home. It's great. Um, but now people are starting to rethink their lives now that everything has opened up and is back to normal. Um, now we are down in volume. Yes, sales are down, but prices are still Prices have softened. There's no question about that. But ironically, they're still up from what they were last year. Um, I think the last stats came out, it was like 1% or something like that. So um, prices price, are up from last year. Prices are up from last year. Really? Yes. Yes. Not substantially, but they are. Even though volumes um, are down. Volumes are down, but the prices are still up slightly. They're not like they were two years ago. Um, but yes, there is a decline for sure. And, you know, we've got two more interest hikes coming. Um, that's going to further soften the market. And of course, you know, everyone's talking about a looming recession. So that's affecting buyers pulling the trigger, which is having homes sit longer. So yes, price reductions, uh, extensions, terminations, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, and it's also in part because sellers are having a hard time resonating with the new market. So they want a price because they know their neighbor got something back in March. And then when they're not getting it, that's affecting it. So as realtors, we educate our clients on to, well, I don't know how we can list at that when, you know, this one sold for this amount and this one's for sale. Um, but sellers like, let's just try. Like, but, okay. you know, I, I, I had so many of uh, agents say, but Brian, uh, you know, back a year ago, if you're buying at the high and selling at the high, it's like you're trading high to high. So don't worry about it. So isn't it the same thing now at the low where you're selling low, but you're buying low? Right now, it's all relative. Yes, it is. Absolutely. It's all relative. You're selling low, you're buying low. Now, you said that you um, bought a, re a resort property for $100,000 uh, below ask. Sort of the, the the academic theory is that in a, in a, in a housing uh, collapse, bust, whatever you want to call it, reduction, it is resort properties that go first down, then yeah. it's luxury properties, and then it's sort of farther afield properties. Um, has that happened? What's happened in those different segments? So we talked about um, the commute, um, the, 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 the houses in those towns that people moved to during COVID. That's come down by most people think 10 to 15 percent. What's happened in resort properties? So recreation is the same thing. I mean, people right now are worried and it keeps them up at night if they can even continue to afford their own primary residence. So the last thing people are going to do most people, average people, are they're going to go buy a cottage, right? Like, so I suspected back in the summer that if you're looking for a recreational property, cottage property, you're going to start seeing them come on the market in October, November. They're going to close it up and they're going to be like, I don't know if we can carry two properties right now. So the recreational property, uh, and when I ran my comparables for my client, that's exactly what I found. They were selling recently for up to 200000 less than what they listed at. And they were sitting for 40, 50 days. Okay. So 200,000 less on what? On a million or the 2 million or how big? Uh, what one was 1. 1.6 and it ended up selling for 1.435. And then another one was 1. 1.8 and it ended up selling in the 1.6s. So it seems to be oh, the trend. 15%. Yeah. So yeah, we're down 15 to 20% depending on the area. That's where we're at. Really? That's interesting. So if you wanted, if you got cash and you wanted to, uh, to buy a recreational property, it sounds like either now or in a couple of months is the right time. I agree. I'm looking for another one. I'm just waiting for the right one. <laughs> another one that you can the do. Now's the time. You've got a lot of distressed properties that are sitting there and they're sitting for a long time. Sellers, you know, want to unload them, liquefy their assets um, because it may go down again before the end of the year or maybe early next year, right? No one knows. You don't have a crystal ball. No. Um, what but, about uh, what about high end properties? What's happened with high end? Uh, supposedly, people, you know, that need to live, keep their houses, but people that have stretched for the high end uh, um, end up having problems and and uh, and down uh, whatever it's called, uh, you know, uh, go into a, a less expensive home. Um, has have luxury homes kept their value? Have they come down um, too, or or as the academic thing would say, even more? 
Well, luxury homes have come down in value just like everything else. But when you're at a certain price point, you don't have that demographic looking. So that $5 million home in Lord Park is going to sit there for a little bit because not everyone can afford a home that's $5 million. So those are going to sit a little bit longer. And they're like, I mean, they're likely going to get a little bit less than that. We don't have homes down here that are going well over asking unless they're, you know, starting off ridiculously low, which that's not the case. Um, so when you have these high end pockets in South Mississauga, Mineola, you know, Lauren Park, they're very desirable. And so you have a certain demographic that's looking um, and they're high end neighborhoods and people want to be in high end neighborhoods where you have highly claimed schools, um, you know, so you're by the lake. So those things all have value. So yeah, they do retain their value. They're not- oh, that's interesting. You think they're retaining their value. They're not being impacted. Well, they are, but not as much, right? They are not as much because of the area. People will pay to be, you know, close to the city, accessible to highways. Um, but there's absolutely, there's price reductions here. Yes, they are selling. Okay. So like I've been told that, uh, that the, one of the biggest things right now is uh, time in the market has gone from like less than a month to like more than three months. Uh, what are yes. you saying? Yes, that's correct. Houses are not selling in 10 days or five days like they used to. Um, but remember, 30 days on the market is not even that bad. Like, But it's bad for everybody because we're used to one day and it's gone. So two weeks right now, you think it's old, right? So that's what it used to be, um, you know, before we were in a hyperactive, act, uh, hyper, set, um, hyper busy uh, market. So right. But yes, you're right. They're sitting for 35, 40. That's when they're starting to sell. So days on market have increased. Yes. We're chatting tonight with Carla Corsi, who is a uh, real estate agent in South Mississauga with Remax uh, Enterprises. Um, we're going to take a break for some messages and be back with some concluding comments on the real estate market and the real estate business with Carla. Um, Carla, if people want to contact you, how best to contact you? Do you have a website? I've got a website. Uh, it's CarlaCorsi.com. I'm also on Instagram, Corsi Properties GTA, Facebook, LinkedIn. Just Google me. I'm pretty much everywhere. And my phone hey number is everyone. We'll be back in just two minutes with Carla. Welcome back, everyone, to the Brian Crumby Radio Hour on Saga 960. My guest tonight is Carla Corsi, who is a real estate uh, uh, agent in South Mississauga um, with Remax. And you can get her with, what's the website, CarlaCorsi.com? CarlaCorsi.com. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm everywhere. Awesome. Carla, you know, we've just been talking about the real estate market and how you gave up 22-year career with the provincial government to join what you said was your passion and that you not only do this um, from a business standpoint, but you've created another business in buying properties and, and doing the Airbnb. But what really grabbed me on your Instagram posting is that you you constantly post these inspirational quotes and sayings and things. Um, why? Does that help your business? Is it, what, are you, what are you trying to do with this, you know, inspirational uh, postings? I love inspirational posts, uh, uh, posts and sayings and you know, everything you do, regardless in what business that you're in and what stage in life you are, it's always, it always comes down to mindset, right? It's always mind over matter. And we all go through difficult times. We all go through challenging times. And sometimes we get lost in those times. And sometimes I have come across posts on other people's, um, you know, social media and it resonates with me. It, it's, you know, you see words, like it just, it captivates and it speaks to you. It's like, it's talking to you. And so when I see something that resonates with me, um, I love to share it because it could be resonating with someone else. It can make the difference in someone else, you know, waking up in the morning and, and not having that mindset where it should be. And they see something that I've posted and they may feel that same feeling like it gives them that shift. So I'm always looking for, I mean, I'm very big on, you know, what you put out there, you receive, I'm very big on, you know, what you ask for, you'll get, um, you know, having just faith in your destiny and believing that the universe will deliver. I know people may think it's a little hocus pocus, um, but, you know, if you want something, you put it out there and you work hard and you'll get it, you know, and I think people feel like some things are so far out of reach and I'm living proof that it's it's not. I mean, I had small kids. I got my real estate license. 
I went for my brokers, you know, I got promoted three times with, you know, um, with the Toronto police and I still had a very successful real estate, um, business on the side, bought properties and I'm still a very active mom with my kids. I'm at home. I cook meals. I clean. I'm like everybody else. I don't have nannies. I don't have anything. So, and I think it's all just having that positive mindset that gets you through the day and not every day you wake up with that mindset. So I feel like if I put that out there, you know, it may, it may resonate with somebody and, and help someone get through that day and, and feel like, Hey, you know, we're all, we're all in it together. And we all have those types of days where we need that motivation to plow forward. Well, it resonated with me. Uh, well, and so thank, thank you for those uh, posts. Cause I found them inspirational and that's why I reached out to you because I found that, uh, that you were, a real person trying to help people, not just trying to get another client and, and do a sale. And so I'm I really so think grateful that, that comes across that way. Thank you. It does come across that way. And please continue doing it. Uh, everyone, if you're looking for a real estate broker in uh, in South Mississauga, carlacorsi.com is where you should go. And if you just want some inspiration, you should follow Carla Corsi on Instagram. Carla Corsi, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. So let me end with a couple uh, final comments, if I could. Um, I think the real estate market uh, is under challenge uh, big time today. I think interest rate increases are going to have the the intended effect, which is to bring the market down. Um, and uh, and I think that's probably called for because I think that uh, we've had outrageous increases over the course of the last couple of years. Um, but what uh, it does do is it provides an opportunity. I'm not sure if that opportunity is today. That opportunity might be in a couple of months. Uh, but it does provide an opportunity. Um, and uh, and so I think that uh, for people that uh, do need to uh, to to buy, um, you know, now's the time to start potentially looking. And uh, and it's almost impossible to, whether it's in the stock market or the currency markets or the commodity markets or the real estate market, pick the low uh, and, uh, and or know when the high is. But too often, we do the opposite of what we're supposed to do. When we buy, we, we buy when it's high, because the, the psychologically, everyone's buying. And so, oh my God, we should all buy and get in. Uh, and we make the mistake and we all sell when it's low um, uh, because the, the the market is depressed and uh, people are negative about it, which is what, you know, in business 101 or practical world 101, we all learned you should buy when it's low and you should sell when it's high. So we actually have been doing the opposite of what we should be doing. And the market coming down um, is the opportunity for us to buy. And and sellers, yeah, you're going to get frustrated uh, that uh, you're less than your neighbor sold a couple months ago, but you'll be able to buy, as Carla said, at uh, potentially uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars, 10, 15%, maybe even more lower than uh, you would have been buying at the time if you had sold a couple months ago. So I think that the market should come down. I think it will come down. I, I think that the statistics haven't shown it yet because the houses actually haven't sold, the, the sellers haven't adjusted. I think this 47% decrease in volume should indicate that that's gonna be maybe not the same percentage, but some sort of percentage like that, the uh, the reduction in the future. Um, that's basic sort of supply and demand uh, economics. But I think it's appropriate. I think our market was overvalued and I think it's gonna create some incredible buying opportunities. So the, the, the selling might be frustrating, but the buying could be spectacular. And that's what markets are all about. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Um, thank you for both my guests uh, from the real estate industry, giving a sense of the market and also for a sense of um, being you know, real. Um, and, and one of the lines that I love the most that, uh, that our first guest told us about was being successful was finding a family, a home, not just selling someone a house. So actually thinking about people as real people and real families and finding them something that they'd be happy and not just trying to get the deal. And so I think that real estate brokers, real estate agents that have that kind of an attitude are the ones that are most successful. And Carla really exhibits that uh, with her uh, her posting on a fairly regular basis. So check her out. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for joining us. I remind you I'm on every Monday through Friday at six o'clock on 9.60 a.m. You can stream me online, even from South Mississauga at www.saga at 960am.ca. Good night, everybody. Thank you, Carla. Thank you.